Okay, this is lesson 1.1.b, which is skewed data and outliers. So in this lesson, you are going to be able to do three things at the end. You're going to be able to determine if data is left skewed, right skewed, or normally distributed. I'm also going to show you how to use an online calculator to calculate your mean and standard deviation. And then you will also um, investigate the effect of extreme data. So in other words, outliers. So here's three examples of outliers, how they look graphically. This first example, you can see the outlier right up here. And over here in the middle, it's way out to the right. And on the left, you can look at the values and you can see that one clearly does not fit in. So when we collect data, there are sometimes values that are far away from the main group of data. So the question is, what do we do with them? How do we treat them? So let me give you an example. In this example, this is a long jump example. So a new track coach was working with his team and um, their performances have gotten better. And up here are the results of the um, athlete's performances. So we have Augustus, he improved his time by point, or his distance I should say, by 0.15 meters. There's Tom, June, Carol, Bob. Everybody has improved except for Sam. Sam, unfortunately, has gotten worse. So if we plot those on a number line, here's Sam. Clearly, he's an outlier. Everybody else is clustered together. Okay, so let's calculate the average, the mean. So if we add up all the scores or all the increases in distance, except for here we have a decrease, divide by the number that we have, we get an overall average decrease of 0 0.01 meters. So how effective is this coach? Everybody's performance went down on average though, right? So is the coach useless? Well, this is why we have to examine outliers. Sam's result is an outlier. So let's consider what if we removed Sam's result. So continuing on with the long jump, if we take out Sam, because he's clearly an anomaly, we can calculate a new mean of 0 0.08 meters. So there we have it, 0 0.08 meters. As a whole now, everything looks great. The coach is much better than he looked before. But really, is that fair? Can we just get rid of values we don't like in order to improve our averages? So what to do? You need to think. Why is that value over there? So when you're looking at data, when you're graphing data and there's outliers, what, what's going on? Why is there a value over there? It may be very normal to have high and low values. Um, occasionally people are very short. Occasionally people are really tall. They can be outliers. Not everybody, not every female is five feet four. Sometimes you have a female that might be four feet or sometimes you have a female that might be seven feet. Clearly they're outliers. Same thing with weather. You can have days and days and days of no rain, and then suddenly you can have a huge downpour. So clearly we do have outliers. So let's look back at Sam. We find out that Sam was indeed feeling sick that day, not the coach's fault at all. So perhaps in that case, it would be a good idea to remove Sam because that's abnormal. He's not normally sick. Um, so when you get rid of the outlier, then you can truly see what the data is doing. All right, let's examine the mean, median, and mode. We saw how the outliers affected our average, but what about the median and mode? Do the outliers affect our median and mode? So if we examine the median, which remember is the middle value, in order to find the middle value, you need to make sure that you order the data and then count and find the middle value. If there's two middle values, then you find the average of the two middle values. So if you include same, Sam, the median is 0 0.085, and without Sam, it's 0 0.11. So it went up a little bit. And that's more of a factor of it's a new middle value when you take Sam out. The mode, which is the most common value, stayed the same. It didn't change. Okay. So if you consider what the outliers affect, it really has a bigger effect on your average and not so much on the median or mode. Consider one final thing. 
what if you were a great student and you were getting 90s, 95s on all your tests? Just incredible. And then suddenly um, you had a bad week. You were sick or you went out of town for whatever reason. You were not able to study. You were not able to do your homework. You took the test and you received a 40%. How is that going to affect your overall average? It's going to pull it way down. But in fact, does that really represent what kind of a student you are? Probably not. That was an anomaly. That's an outlier. So now let's look at the shapes. Let's go back to visually what they look like. Remember that earlier in the lesson we classified data into three categories. So we can describe the data as symmetric, left skewed or right skewed. And we can use that classification for any data set. So here is a um, symmetric, symmetrical data set, bell shaped, normal distribution. The key to this is that your mean, median, and mode are the same exact number. They all equal each other. And then if you notice the tails on the distributions out here to the left, out here to the right, they are symmetric, right? And it gets smaller. Less people have these values out here and out here. Think of this as grades. There are probably very few people out here that have Fs, more people up here, maybe with the, your C's, and then as you get closer to A's, less people are able to, learn, uh, to earn A's. I just want to introduce you to a box and whiskers diagram over here on the right. So, let's circle it. Okay, so here's a box and whiskers plot. You probably remember doing that some time ago. And I just want to review it. These tails here on the end represent your high up here and your low down here. This bar in the middle represents your median, halfway between the first and the third quartiles. Okay. Down here would be your first quartile. The median is always your second quartile. And then you have a third and a fourth quartile up here. This top one is usually your fourth one. This is usually your first and the second one is in between. Okay, now let's move on to some skewed graphs. So this graph right here on the left is considered to a skewed right graph. It seems a little bit confusing because it almost looks like it's skewed left because all the data is on the left. However, if you think about the meaning of that, really what they're saying is that we have a skew because we have some outliers here. We have some data out here on the very end, which forces it to be skewed right. So it has a long right tail. One other thing I want you to notice, you know, if you think about the median, the median is always in the middle of your data, and most of your data is over here on the left. So the median is gonna be more towards the left, whereas your mean was skewed right due to some outlier out here. So the mean is going to be to the right of your median, and that is a good indication of whether or not you have symmetrical data or you have data that is skewed right, as in this example. So our median is going to be closer to our first quartile, here's our first quartile right here, as compared to the third quartile, which is somewhere up here. All right. Here is a summary of the three different types of graph. So we have the symmetric, and as you know, we I'll use x bar to represent your mean. Your mean is going to be equal to your median, which is usually equal to your mode as well. Everything is symmetric. In this graph, you will remember that there is an outlier up here which is skewing your mean. So where is your mean? So let's do this. Let's look at our median, and let's look at our mean, and let's put an inequality in there. So is the median less than the mean, or is the median going to be greater than the mean? Well, in this case, remember that the mean is skewed to the right. The value is going this way to the right, this way, are greater. So the mean is going to be greater, which means the median is going to be less than the mean. The median is going to be to the left of the mean. So in this last example, 
you can probably predict then. Let's compare the median to the mean. What's happening here? Well, we have an outlier down here, which is going to cause the mean to skew to the left, to the lesser values. So in this case, our average is going to become less than the middle of our data. So that means that our median will therefore be greater than the mean. Okay, a couple of things to just remember. Now let's actually try an activity. So here is a set of data, and we're needing to determine whether the data is skewed right or left, or is it symmetric? It's hard to tell when you look at this data. So what we want to do is maybe come up with some calculations. We want to find our mean, our median, our standard deviation, and then let's actually go ahead and find the first and third quartiles so we can see if the median is closer to the first quartile or closer to the third. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, and you will have this calculator on one of your practice sets um, after this lesson, but I'm going to go in there and I'm going to type all the data values. So I do a data value followed by a comma, no space, type in the next data value followed by a comma, and so on and so forth. So I will go ahead and type these in and we'll do a calculation. Okay, I have all my data in there. All I have to do is press the calculate button and voila, I have all the information that I need. I know my average and I know my standard deviation. That's pretty nice compared to having to add up all the numbers on your own and divide by, it looks like we have 14 pieces of data. Um, we are not going over how to calculate the standard deviation, but I want you to be able to find it on a calculator. So now what we can do is go over here and we can write in what we know. So we did find the, median, the mean, and the mean we said was 41.14, I'll round to two decimal places, 41.14. I don't know the median just yet, but I do know the standard deviation is 10.65, and I don't know the first or third quartiles. Well luckily if I come up here to my data, and we'll go ahead and change colors. Um, I can see that my data is actually organized from least to greatest, so that's nice. What I can do now is I can locate my median. There are 14 pieces of data, so let me count to seven, which is about halfway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I get 41. And notice on the left, one, two, or on the right, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I get 42. So what do we do if we have two pieces of data? You add them together, divide by two, that's finding the average, and that then becomes your middle number. So 41.5 is my median, and I'll put that over here. 41.5. Now let's find the quartiles. So to find the quartiles, and we'll change to orange, what we're going to do is we're going to take the lower half of the data first. So starting with 41 all the way through 27. And we're just going to find the middle. So we know that we have seven pieces of data. So our middle should be the fourth piece of data. So starting with 27, if I count, I've got one, two, three, four, brings us to 32. And I'll just double check. 41, uh, that's number one, two, three, and four. So 32 is going to be my first quartile, and I can write it over here, 32. And then now let's go ahead and find the third quartile. So we'll use the same techniques. I've got seven pieces of data, so I know that my middle data would be the fourth one in line. So I've got one, two, three, four. 46 is my third quartile. And I'll just record that. So now we can analyze and we can determine whether or not our data is symmetric, skewed right or left. And I'm prepared to justify my answer. So think about that for a second. Compare the mean to the median. Then also look at the median as compared to the first and third quartile. Which one is it closer to? All right, so here's our answers. And here's our conclusion. 
hopefully you concluded that the data set was skewed left for two reasons. The mean is less than the median, so that means there's an outlier to the left pulling the mean down in value, but notice that it's only a small difference. That's not a very strong reason because really it could be pretty symmetrical. And what I've done here is I've actually plotted a box and whiskers plot. And if you look at it, it is very hard to tell where, you know, if this median is, is um, closer to the first quartile or closer to the third quartile, which is not currently marked on here. So a better reason though is that the median is closer to the third quartile. So let's think about this. Here's our median at 41.5 and we'll write that in 41.5. Our first quartile is here, coming down. Okay, so this is our first quartile. And then our third quartile is at 46, which is about right here. And we'll go up, actually. This is our third quartile. So you can see that the median is actually closer to the third quartile than the first quartile. All right, so hopefully now you have a good understanding of skewed data and what outliers do to your data, to your average. And now you can go on to the practice problems and see if you can answer those.